Hi everyone, it's Susan. Welcome back. I have wonderful news for you today. We're talking about love bombing. Uh, Susan Winter, best-selling author and relationship expert. This entire segment of these live presentations, I'm covering every aspect of bad behavior, bad dating behavior. Now, I want you all to be very clear, this is not acceptable. You may, if you are a person who is currently dating in the world, think, oh, well, everybody ghosts, I guess. Oh, people future fake. Oh, I guess this is just hot and cold. And so I want to clarify every single aspect of how these dating games occur, how to notice the red flags and the signs so that you know you're in a game, how to call out the person or not, depending upon the strategy that you'd like to accomplish, and then how to bypass, eliminate, or stop that dating game. That way, you are going to be an informed dater. So I'm really excited to see all of you here. Now, I realize I'm shooting this from the West Coast, so I'm getting a lot of my European friends because it's it's a reasonable time of day, right? For you guys, it's early evening. Hi, everybody. So just do me a favor, shoot a little uh, text as to where you're from, and I'll give you a country uh, shout out. I know the Netherlands has been here. Um, let's see. Um, oh, so listen, by the way, if you have something you'd like me to answer a question, let me start with, I'm just going to be talking about love bombing. That's today. So if you have something you want to say about love bombing, do me a favor, make it easy for me to find it, put it in super chat. So it'll be highlighted. Okay. UK, Florida, Hungary, Long Island, Hong Kong, Hong Kong. Oh, oh Mark. Oh, Mark. I love Hong Kong. Okay. Arlington, Virginia, Brazil, Australia, Austria. Yeah. Australia, London. Dublin, Ireland, Manchester, England, Kenya, New Orleans, London, Florida, Charlotte, Austria, LA, so close, so close to you, Denmark, Norway, yeah, so I'm half Norwegian, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see, um, uh, Virginia, uh, Los Angeles, Texas, India, California, Wales, uh, London, okay, California, Wales, St. Louis, Missouri, Florida. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. Today, we are talking about love bombing. So let me start with what it is, then get into why people do it, okay? Love bombing is the act of absolutely turning the floodlight of attention and compliments on you. It is the adulation, the flattery, everything we love. Human beings love to be accepted. You meet a person and they flatter you. And if they're really clever, they will flatter you on the things that you value most about yourself. Now, kind of a low class is the sexual flirtation, like, wow, you'll really look hot. And that doesn't really do that much for people. That's kind of a ploy. And at least as a female, we've all, we, if anything, we kind of push it away. We're like, oh, thanks a lot. When somebody flatters us on a quality that we possess, or on our bearing, on our intelligence, on our character, on our success, on our achievements, or, okay, even that they think they're, that we're gorgeous. This is nice, and we warm up to it. Love bombing is the act of absolutely dropping this <laughs> bombs of flattery, adulation, compliments, um, positive reinforcement. It softens the person up. It is a seduction technique to pull you in, to gain your attention, to make you feel wonderful because it's almost Pavlovian. Every time you get around that person, you're going to feel kind of, wow, I'm special. And who doesn't want the mirror that reflects back the fact that we're special? So we are very susceptible to this as human beings. And it is a technique and a trick. And let me be very, very clear about this. It is 100% conscious. There is no, oh, they didn't know what they were doing. They were just caught up in the moment. Oh, no, 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 no. Love bombing is for an end goal. It is a manipulative game. It is an emotional manipulation through the seduction of approval. I have a couple of things that I'm going to do. I'm going to check back here, see how you all are doing, because after all, it is live, right? Um, so, uh, Ruby, Ruby says, I've been, hang on, hang on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hang on. <laughs> you guys, I gotta say, it goes by so quickly. Um, 
Oh, Ruby, where are you? I can't even find you anymore. Okay, somebody's been love bombed. You guys, this is going by so quickly. How do you know the difference between love bombing and general interest from a new guy? Perfect. Thank you so much for this. Uh, Gupnik. Too much, too soon. It is OTT. Over the top. There's flattery. There's interest. There is, you know, the willingness to take your call, answer your text, no downtime. Boom, boom, boom. They're right. They're right there. Everything's good. They make themselves available to you. Um, you're wonderful. You're fabulous. But love bombing is really calculated. It is strategic. It's detailed. It's florid. It's really a lot. And in the beginning, you may find yourself resisting. But then what happens is the person, the pickup artist or the seducer that does this, seductress, they'll pull back if they don't get the response they're really wanting out of you. And now you're left like a person that just had your first hit of heroin and you're looking for the dealer. Like, oh my God, this is the most incredible experience I've ever had. This is love bombing. Now, to be clear, it's not just somebody that wants to hook up with you. It's not just somebody that wants to get you in the gate, put you in their stable. That is one aspect of love bombing. And in um, the introductory, you know, the sentence that I had that clarifies this is, is your date love bombing you? Yes, that is a fast track to having you fall in love with them for control, or at least to be malleable, right? But this is also the practice of anyone who is in one of those cycles of on and off relationships, the hot and cold, better yet for the very bad partner that's always just wearing you down and you, you hang in there because when it's good, it's so good and then it's bad. And then you finally get your resolve and you're like, that's it, not gonna see them anymore, that's it. And you think you can walk away and you do so and you're like, okay, okay, this is good. Then they start. And it's the game to win you back. Love bombing is oftentimes used to get you back. And it's all the promises, how wonderful you are. I can't live without you. Please, you know, I'm going to work on it. We'll see. We'll try. I'm going to try. I had a client. I worked with her. Oh, my gosh. I probably worked with her four or five times a day. My phone was blowing up. It happens so repetitively. I, I had to like keep tracks and center invoices later. It was just a hundred percent. We probably did this four or five months. Now, Susan's advice is maybe you get better one, right? You get a new one. That was the Dalai Lama said that, but you know, it's, she wouldn't, she'd invested so many years. And then it's what I call the degenerate gambler mode. She found that, you know, the more she was in it, the more she'd invested, she didn't dare leave it. So, that's how her partner kept her in the loop of breakup makeup, breakup makeup, breakup makeup. So these super, super highs are artificial. Um, I'm going to read some of the things that you have to say here, everyone. Okay, this is great. Um, let's see. Okay. Oh, here it is. Uh, Ruby writes, I've been love bombed for a few months. Uh, they bought me gifts and tried to push me into a relationship, but now she started pulling away, so I'm not contacting them. So what we're looking for <laughs> is consistency, right? This is normal. This is healthy. And I, I mean, we're all redefining what normal is for us, but an abusive relationship goes like this. You don't want that. Consistency uh, may sound boring to some people, but it's really nice because you know where you stand in a relationship. The person is consistently with you. Okay, um, let's see. Love bombing is a narcissistic manipulation to hook you and then control you. Bingo! Tulum0617. Got it. Absolutely. Okay, also fishing for reciprocal comments in cases of low self-esteem. Yeah, that's more like a passive person that just wants to be liked. I don't think they're trying to control you as much as, well, you're right. Um, I would say that kind of person is hoping that you like them so that they will do it. Now, now remember, somebody can compliment you because they really like you and try and get into your good graces so that you will like them. Be very positive about you, think you're wonderful. But there's, there's a distinct difference between that and being love bombed. 
being love bombed, it is really just nonstop, powerful, potent, profound, intense. So much so that no matter what kind of psychological armor you've got up, you can kind of go, oh, so nice to hear those things. Okay, let's see. Um, Andres Ricardo, thank you for the hearts. Um, I'm not sure if I'd like to date Susan, but to sit under the stars drinking wine with her. That's very, very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Susan, I'm a genius. You asked if you want to think so. Thank you. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? I wanted to read something by Alexandra. So I've just discovered this new thing. We have a community page. I don't know if you guys know this. This is where I announce what I'm doing next. And Alexandra uh, Maria has been a very strong supporter here. So shout out to her. And she says, my dear Susan, you can use my commentary for your live event if you want. She said, love bombing is a form of emotional abuse. I'd fallen for it two years ago and she met her guy on a dating app. Now, there's a lot more commentary. She goes on to say, I'm not going to demonize anyone, but I would love to use my message to warn all of you guys, please be careful with yourself, your feelings and your hopes. Some people are very good mirroring your desires and shine like the perfect partner. Yes, 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 yes. That's one of the hallmarks. Thank you for that, Alexandra. Um, but when reality moves into the scene, they leave you because they think they can do better, they're better supplies. She talks about how he left her and she had to go full no contact to get over it. And it seemed like she never existed. So remember, we're talking about dating games, bad behavior. The people who do this are more afraid of being hurt than you are. Now, I know, Alexander, from something like this, you can't even believe that. They are either, well, they are either or both unawakened to love, so they don't know the power of the force they're playing with, or they are simply so in need of control and your love to make them safe that they cannot relax until they've got you locked down. Now, once they have you locked down, again, you're just at their whim. So this is why we find it disagreeable, and this is why we do not do this. So if you have any questions for me, put them in Super Chat for sure. I will see that. So again, to go over this, love bombing, you're going to know it's too much, too fast, too soon. It is 100% strategic. It is purposeful. It is conscious. They do this to set us up, to get us into the stable, and then to either bench us or control us, or it can be used by an ex or a current something, something going on person that is trying to, you know, just uh, tread water in the relationship. And then when you get fed up, they get, you know, you finally get rid of them and then they work their way back through the love bombing. Okay. So it's hot and cold. It is the hot aspect of hot and cold. It is there to hook you. And it's not only new dates, but it's the messy old relationships. Um, praise, adulation. We all love this stuff. You know, we love to be treated well. And we are hoping in all of this, in every chance of meeting somebody, we're really hoping that what they're going to do is show us their kindness and that maybe we're meeting the one, a person who really sees us as our best self, how we would like to see ourselves. So I'm going to read your questions. I first want to deal with love bombing. In about five minutes, I will answer generic questions. And again, if you really want me to see it for sure and not miss it, put it in the super chat. Okay. The best way to confront a love bomber. Okay. I think this is a question, Jason. Um, let's see. Best way to confront a love bomber X who keeps coming back. Okay. You have to know this game. If they keep coming back, so sorry, I don't mean to offend you, but it's you. You got to close that door. I know, I know, I know, I know you want to believe everything they say. I know. It's the words are beautiful. And when the moments were good, they were blissful. And they know that. And they ride on those few first weeks, months, when everything was great. And we are so hooked by that. When you know you're being love bombed, to simply get you back into the loop of makeup, break up, don't bite the bait. Look future forward, get somebody else that's really ready, willing, and able to love you. I hope that helps. 
Um, okay, this is good. You guys are talking to each other. Uh, let's see, where is Super Chat? Super Chat, I think, is the little square with the little dollar sign like that underneath it. I'm kind of new to this too. Um, let's see, Daniel, oh, he told me I kept getting better and better and told his mom about me. Then he ghosted and treated me badly. No respect, no contact. Are people that evil? I really thought we got along. Okay, this is, thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing this up. This is something that people were writing me on, on the community page too. It's almost um, a formula. Love bomb, love bomb, love bomb, ghost. We have to decipher between absolute confusion and getting whipped up in the moment and somebody who's really conscious. Are there that many wicked, horrible people? Um, there are very few sociopaths out there. As I look at the dating terrain, you know what the biggest offender is? Other systems and coaches who teach people to play these horrific ego deflating games to capture, control, create tension, create insecurity so that the person pursues them and loses all sense of reality. There's some really horrible, and you know what? These games work, but they only work on a certain segment of the population. We're all susceptible to them, but dating games work, especially when you don't know who you are, you don't know what you want, and you don't know that it's actually a game. Quickest way to tell if you're in any dating game you start reacting. You're not yourself. Your normal way of being isn't occurring. You are acting weird. You're responding to things. You're getting, you're like, you're trying to recover your ego. Every move has got to be measured. We don't want to do that. We want to be comfortable enough, powerful enough to be coming from our authentic self. That is real power. Who I am, what I want, how I communicate that to you. Can we do that? Let's give it some time. Let's give it some opportunity. But if in the end, I've been as clear as possible and our values and goals and dispositions don't mesh, we tried. Okay, let's see. Gonna get back to you guys. All righty here. I have a guy who always wants to be consistent with who, uh, who always and being consistent with love bombing, but he never ghosted me. I know for three months, is he love bombing? Okay, G87. I think you might be in a relationship, <laughs> but the fact that you don't know if you're in one kind of worries me. If you've been with somebody three months and they're very kind and they're very sweet and they love bomb you, remember this, I'm talking about a conscious strategy. That's the difference between somebody who really loves you. I mean, maybe you've got a relationship. Have you discussed this? Do you have sexual exclusivity? Are they seeing only you? Are they consistent with their word and their actions? If they tell you they're going to be seeing you Friday, are they seeing you Friday or do they try and you know, like escape your call and then two o'clock, well, yeah, wow, I was really tired. I mean, what's going on here? So you have to know what you've got because I'm not there. Okay, let's see. Uh, Eric, love your videos. You are awesome. Thank you, Eric. Okay, so now you guys are talking to each other. Talking to a love bomber now. Okay, he is in the cold stage. So unfortunate. He seemed like a great person. Okay, Tachi girl, you have some options here. You can be quiet and see how it plays out. Just bait them to see how they're going to respond. Or you can give your partner some vital information. This is kind of a way to call them out, but it's more instructional. If there is the slightest possibility that they may be a good person who's confused, scared, worried, whatever, doesn't know what to do, taking advice from the wrong people, you could say, you know what I loved when I first met you? It was so easy. I mean, we got together, we were in contact, everything was consistent, there was a lot of attention. It really drew me in. And now uh, it's just like the opposite. And it's really hard for me to stay motivated enough to stay connected to you. I loved that first person. By the way, it, is that person gonna come back? Because that's the one I'd really like to know. This person I can't do much with, just saying up to you. So when we call somebody out and we put it in their corner, at least now they have a chance to fix it if they think they are in error. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Joe um, Sandstrom says, a love bomber who goes cold might be looking for validation or reciprocation. Okay. Also understand, as if we couldn't make this any harder, right? Also understand, everybody's scared. What if your person really likes you? And this is what I call the accidental distancing game. They wrote you, you wrote them. Then there was a lag, you were busy doing something, you didn't get back to them, they asked a question, so now they pull back and now they're not sure. Then worse yet, somebody gets in their head. Their friends go, oh man, like you've given this person too much attention, they're gonna, yeah, don't make them feel so secure. You gotta pull them back, don't let them feel like a priority. Then they'll kind of snap into shape. So maybe somebody told them to pull back. You know, there is so much bad information and half the time it's given by friends that love us, friends and family, and they really think they're doing us a favor and they are passing on the misinformation that they got. All right, what else do we have here? Okay, um, uh, Tashi Girl, good, I think, thank you. You are, you are certainly welcome, I hope that works for you. Um, let's see, the Panther says a lot of men online are like that, illusion of choice. Yes, the paradox of choice, it is, so I'm working with a decorator right now. Therefore, the empty house, you can see this, and the curio cabinet is going away. And I have a bunch of dining room chairs, and that's about it. I've explained to her, you can't show me too much. The more I see, the more frozen I get. I don't want that many options. I'm going to be very, very, very specific about what I'm looking for. You find it, bring it back to me. So the paradox of choice is what happens online. Uh, now, does anybody have any questions about love bombing? If so, put it in super chat. Otherwise, put in super chat the question you want me to answer because we can now go into everything else. In the meantime, I'm just going to read what's here. Um, Rachna, you are welcome. Very nice to talk to you here. Um, the Panther, you have great style. I do appreciate that. Um, Joe, okay, yes, it's complicated but it's certainly getting, oh, you're so sweet with Susan's insight. So Joe, um, you know, you sound very uh, intuitive and I think you really know how to dissect what's going on here. Try and talk, try and talk to your person. Okay, Amra, oh my God, Miss Susan, you're a sure genius, send you hearts, hearts, hearts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Tony writes, let's see, why would a guy I met online and not in real life, okay, why would a guy I met in online and not in real life tell me that he wants to have his babies and all this sweet talk and promises? Why would he sell this if he doesn't? Oh, oh, oh God. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. If somebody wants to have your babies, yeah. That's a discussion you have when you're in a relationship. Oh, that's so, that's so bad. That's so bad. That's so out of line. Um, I don't know. I, I, do you really think that's flattery? You know, having my babies and raising them? Now that, that's something noble. Just having my babies, I don't know, little yous all around, what, I was just the conduit for that to happen? I mean, I'm not very excited about that. Somebody, okay, so here's the thing. Most of us are sequestered. Some of you that are watching where you live, your cities, your countries might be opening up gradually. This is all being... Uh, shot during the coronavirus. Now, obviously we couldn't meet any other way than online. So people will say a lot of things to throw the bait and hook us and reel us in. A comment like that is just to get you excited. This is probably somebody that's married and already has babies littered someplace around the house. So that kind of over the top should be actual red flag. It should be like, oh my gosh, this person is out of their mind. So there's a difference between the person that is flash and the person that's solid. And this is a huge, um, what do we call it? A selection process error that a lot of people make when they're younger. When you're young, you tend to go for the flash. And so you know, you're testing your confidence. Do I have what it takes to capture that kind of person? But they're kind of not able to be captured. They're just hardwired to keep running. So oftentimes, unconsciously, men and women will chase this delicious creature, hoping that they can catch it in part to, you know, think, wow, I got that. Look at me. I'm incredible. So it's a, it's a, it's a form of testing our self-esteem. But a real relationship with somebody who's really going to be there for you, um, it's dynamic, but it doesn't have that 
intensity to it because you're not terrified. I have this ongoing comment with somebody about um, getting the goosebumps or getting a nervous stomach when you're around a person. There's excitement. There's also excitement that verges on the edge of terror. So I believe that real visceral feeling that we get is the combination of excitement and terror. Terror because our inner computer knows, oh, this is exciting, it's dangerous, you're stepping out over the edge and there's no safety net underneath here. There's a little bit of awareness that we're not safe, but it's so exciting, we're gonna go for it. Okay, so just for that. Now, let me see what else we have here. Anybody else have something that they wanna talk about? Is there, oh, what did I do? That? I lost that. Is there, I think they wrote, is there a time for love bombing? And I think I lost this. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, you guys, are, this, this is so great. So is there a time for love bombing? Um, yes, when you've admitted you're in love with each other. When you, but it's more measured. I, uh, granted, the first three or four months are always the honeymoon period and everything is so wonderful. And my feeling is for the most part, just ride it, you know, Know what it is, know that it's not gonna last forever, the love will change over time. You know, when you do decades with people, and I mean, I know what this is like, okay? It goes in the excitement phase, it goes in the hopeful phase, then you actually become a partner and a couple, and then it kind of, after those first three or four months of you know being in bed all the time, <laughs> you kind of get back to life. And now it's the person that has good days and bad days. Some days they're in a great mood. Other days they bring you problems. Um, you know, they're there for you. You're there for them. But there are highs and lows. And so it loses some of that thrill of the ride. So what we want to do is, hey, H-U-F. No, that can't be right. <laughs> this can't be right. That's $2,000. This cannot be. You guys, okay. Is that is that right? <laughs> Is that a super chat? I don't know what I'm looking at. That can't be $2,000. You guys, I don't know. Am I seeing something wrong? Do you see $2,000 here? Huff, if, uh, if forgive my lack of technology, but if that's $2,000, I mean, I don't even know how to thank you enough for this. Oh my God in heaven, what can I do for you? Just tell me what you need me to do for you. This is just, I, I, I'm kind of blown away by this. I think this is what this is, but I'm not sure. <laughs> So, oh, you guys, you are amazing. Oh, my God, this is absolutely wonderful. Um, greetings from Romania. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Huff, H-U-F. I, I think I got I to gotta ask what this is. I'm getting so excited here. <laughs> you guys are wonderful. Yeah, it doesn't say 2000. I'm not crazy, right? It's in a different currency. I, I don't care what currency it, it's in. I thank you. If it's 2000 US or if it's 2000 whatever, uh, drachma or whatever, if that still exists, I'm... Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are so, so, so awesome. Okay, uh, Hungary, it's about seven US dollars. Okay, seven US dollars, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, this is about the fact that you guys are actually, not just in your comments, because I treasure those, but that you are showing me that what I do is vital to you. You're showing me appreciation. It's like this, when somebody gets done with a performance and the audience goes like this, I thank you, Huff. I thank you, thank you, because nobody has to do that. This is kind of like national public radio. You know, where they, you know, you can contribute or not, but you get to, you're going to hear it anyway. But I really, really do appreciate it. And I thank you, all of you. Your $7 feels like 2000 And if it's really 2000 I mean, I got to write you somehow. I don't know how to do this. Okay, LaShawn Porter, love those multicolored hearts. Um, does anybody else have something they'd like me to answer for them? Uh, there is no super chat where I live. YouTube does not allow me to. Oh, okay. That's okay. Welcome. You're here because, you know, you're here. And that's what, I can't do any of this without you. Okay. Um, Annalisa writes, um, hey, Susan, I love your advice. Tons of hearts. Um, why do you guys do this? Why do you guys promise the world and then leave after 1.5 years? I did everything for us. I was blindsided and it's killing me. Okay. Um, first of all, got to be very, very clear. This is not gender based. I've got just as many males as I do female clients. Sometimes I have more, 
as a matter of fact, just depends on the time period. People start out strong. You know, it's kind of like a marathon, right? You start out strong. You think you can do it. Not everybody. I mean, it's a bit, you have to realize maybe point. 2% of the population go like this. Oh man, I'm going to screw them over. I'm going to take them for a ride for two, two years, a year and a half, and I can't wait to destroy their life. It doesn't happen like that. People start, they, they try to work it out and they want to be with you. And then things happen and they change and they're influenced by others. Excuse me. So this is why I feel so strongly about how we know ourselves. We have to know ourselves and we have to know enough to be able to communicate all these things to our partner. Your partner may get an incredible learning curve in relationships just because of the knowledge you have. You may be able to teach your partner how to communicate. So here's the thing about my interior designer. She's never worked individual clients. She's the kind where a country club goes, oh, here's a half a million dollars, do the clubhouse. They don't want to see it. They don't want to know it. They don't have an opinion. Uh, we'd like it to be friendly, warm. We got a Western theme, period. I've learned how she needs to talk to me. She's never done this before. And I've learned now how to help her. She'll say, we've got to get rid of these side panels in the guest room. I'll be resistant. Why? I'm, she doesn't tell me why. So I'm, I can't get on board. And I finally said, tell me why. So I know what you're thinking. She said, Susan, it's a little dated and it makes the room look smaller. I'm like, bingo done. I'm with you. I didn't know that. Let me fix that. We can do that. So if you call this out to a partner, what you're doing is you are trying to remember it's sometimes you need to reprimand them. But most times in a relationship, what you're trying to do is educate your partner as to how you're seeing something and find a negotiation. You are trying to get to a place of getting connect it more fully, right? So you are working with communication tools to be very precise. You want to show them what it is that happened to you, what you need, what you want, and especially why you want it. The minute she said, she, all the rooms here are very small. The minute she said it makes it look smaller, bingo. That's all you needed to say. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. Some of you are going, ah, but couldn't somebody just say why? Because they're trying to manipulate you. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Salesmen, yeah, they take a look at you and figure out the, well, the crafty ones, right? Figure out, oh, well, this would be really good for you. If you're, you know, you're a young guy looking to catch the women, you know, this, this car is pretty, this car screams, I've got money and I'm successful. I mean, but, but you know, we know how we're being played, right? So I didn't mean to get off on that, but okay, let me see what else can I say. Um, uh, two, okay, I've, I think I've read you before, but you said, I clung to the love bombing person after the rage and anger came out more and more, I learned that empaths are targets for narcissists. I thought he was traumatized from being a firefighter. Um, you know, we've all got trauma. <laughs> Come on, anybody that's lived in the real world, anybody that's had a life of consequence has had trauma. I mean, there are people that the most traumatic event was they had a grandparent that died. I mean, you go through 9-11 and lose half your family and your friends, right? Uh, you lose your parents during COVID and you can't even go to the hospital and hold their hands. Or some of you from Romania, your grandparents, your parents went through a, a, a dictatorship where, you know, they had no freedom. I mean, Hungary, all this, right? You guys know what this is like. So... It isn't that we don't want a life without pain or, well, we're not looking for pain. We need challenge to grow. It, it creates, it, it does create the stuff, the grit that makes us powerful and dynamic. We just want to release, we, in all this loving stuff, we've got to be able to release the negative. So for all you people that are holding on to the pain, and I know here's the place to talk about it, I'm not saying don't talk about it. The reason I have tried to ask you to let go of the pain is that you lived it once. That's enough. If I let, if I let the people who have harmed me in my life continue to fester in my mind, they're renting space and I'm not getting well. 
and every moment that I let it live beyond the actual pain of what was done in real time, then I'm harming myself. It doesn't mean I agree with what they did. They don't get absolved. I don't even have to forgive you. Uh, that's sometimes that's way too big for me, but I can move past it for me, not for you, for me. That's the power. So you had a narcissist. So you had a sadist. So you had a manipulator. What do you know because of it? What can you share that you didn't know before? How can you help your friends? How can you now foresee this? Oh, a business deal. You experienced it romantically. Now you see somebody across the table from you that you think maybe you want to go into business with or they're coming at you. You're like, oh, I know what this is. I played this game before. So if we can use all of these things to strengthen us, then we've taken the pain and created something potent and powerful, right? So in, in Allowing Magnificence, I, I, I have some line, and they're good, and I wish I could remember what I say, but we turn the, the sword that impaled us. Our job is to turn it into the scepter that empowers us. We take those knives out of us and we use them for our strength. Okay, so again, I went off. You guys, I went off last week too. I'm sorry about that. Oh, you wonderful average crystal CCC. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Woohoo! $2. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are so fabulous. You're hardly average crystal. You're stellar. You guys are just wonderful. Um, it's all the unwanted questions that pop into my head over and over. And my mind keeps cycling questions from time to time during the day and night. Happy, happy, happy. You don't sound so happy, happy, happy right now. Um, are you talking about something you can't get over? Um, so you guys, this is a whole nother thing and I can go into this at another time, but how to get out of the loop of the breakup pain? I've got clients, oh my goodness, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, Annalisa uh, Falconer, thank you, thank you. Th three pounds, three pounds. My Brit over there or a European, okay, oh, there's European, yes. I love your empowering advice. Hearts, 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 hearts to you too. Listen, so the way we get out of the loop of the pain, stop asking. Stop asking yourself, oh my God, if I went left instead of right, I've got a woman that texts me repeatedly. Did I put on his t-shirt? Did, did I break his boundaries? Did, do you think I lost the relationship that way? And I keep saying a hundred times, no, you're partner didn't want a relationship. Remember when they told you right before you slept together? Yeah, I don't want one. And you did it anyway. This is what happens. So selection process, knowing what you want and match that against how they're showing up. Give people a chance. Everybody's scared. They may not have the tools that you do. They may not know what you know about communication and self-knowledge. We give them a chance. But the way to get out of that painful loop is sometimes you just got to say, it didn't work out. I didn't show up well. Damn it. I didn't. I didn't. I can't change it. I can't retract it. So then I go to another level and I think not for nothing. Maybe for something I can't see right now. I wasn't supposed to go there. Now, this depends on how you want to think. I've made a decision in this life. I'm going to choose the thinking that helps me thrive. And I'll find out at the end of the line, when I die or not die, or whatever happens, I'll figure out whether I was right or not. But philosophically, I'm okay with creating a system that allows me to live in the most functional state possible, to be the most productive, to be the happiest, to be the most optimistic, to be resilient, and if I have to call on spiritual tools to do it, I'm going to do that because I want to be effective here in this world. But that's my personal philosophy. You guys can think what you like. It's, it's just that's a Susan thing. OK, so we're going to wrap it up pretty soon. You guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> I got so excited thinking somebody gave me two thousand dollars. And I thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the contribution. This is amazing. You guys, I love the fact that you're talking to each other. Um, let's see, anything else? What can I do for you? So I haven't chosen yet what I'm going to talk about next week, but I try to vary them because many of these dating game 
issues are very, very close. Like when I was signing off last time, I said uh, I was going to do orbiting, but orbiting was so close to our last conversation of benching that I just said, you know, let me break it up a bit. Okay, so bottom line about love bombing, too much, too soon. When it seems, um, oh, 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 hi, hi, oh, Scar, hi. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, a five euro contribution or a five pound, no, that's a euro. Yeah, I think it's euro, okay. Um, she said, hang on. Um, hi, Susan, my date of three months suddenly went cold and distanced even though we connected to a spiritual level. I'm worried and I don't know what to do. First, I want you to review everything that happened. See if you think in your mind there was some glitch, some weird, some misinterpretation. Um, let me know if, if the, you have something you want to say. We'll continue this on the other uh, side of it uh, when it comes up live. Um, Scar, I'm, I don't know enough about this to help you. I need a little bit more. If you think that you connected on a spiritual level and you have that communication ability in that language, I'd be very diplomatic, very sweet, and say, look, I really like you. I've connected with you in a manner that is very meaningful to me, and it's rare, and I don't get that every day. So to honor what we have and our ease of communication coming from this shared perspective, what I'd like to do is um, let's talk about what we'd like to do next. Are you of a mind to continue this? I am. If so, what do you think we need to do? How do you feel right now? And tell them they're safe to tell you the truth. I always say to guys in the beginning, it's not the truth that scares me. You know, you're gonna be fine. Whatever you tell me, no matter how horrific, I want the truth because it's the lies you will lead me to believe that will break my heart. And if I find out something is going on from somebody else and not from you, <laughs> I'm going to get you. So don't do that. So Scar, I hope that answers you. And um, let's see. Oh, 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 oh my God. There's so many of these. Okay. Um, Brianna uh, Barres, $5 US. You guys are so fabulous. Okay. I'm 24. How do I tell a man that I'm a virgin waiting until marriage? How do I tell a man that I'm on social security without scaring them? I, I don't know what that second part means on social security. Do you mean um, you're aided by the, I, I, listen, um, Find out, answer for yourself why you've chosen to wait. I have a number of people that are of Asian descent that were so busy working, getting a PhD, they never had time to date and just didn't have time to get around to it. And they're not about to hook up. Now, I'm not saying that that's the only culture. Not everybody is a virgin because of a religious reason, but if you have a religious reason, state it. Whenever you're saying something about yourself, say the why. Just like with the, um, the panels, in the guest room, that the, there's a, a, a kind of a cornice and then these fabric panels that come down. Tell, tell them why. Tell them why. I was waiting to have it be somebody special. If they're scared off by it, the ones who are scared about taking a virgin are guys that know they're going to play with you because they kind of like, wow, I got dozens and dozens and dozens of girls I can be with. I don't want to do this to this one. Most of them, no matter how bad the player, will actually say they'll back off. Okay, so Brianna, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Barka Singh, okay, this is 100 in your country. I don't know what it is, but I thought, you guys, I'm getting so excited about this. A lot of love to you, Susan, for all your support. That is just a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, you guys, remember, I can't do this without you. I cannot do this without you. What am I gonna do, talk to myself in the corner? Huh. Oh yeah, Susan, I got some information to share. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. You guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, social security disability. Um, I worked with, do you, do you remember me telling you about the girl who blew up my phone all the time and I had to create invoices because every day I talked to her unexpectedly. I had a different kind of um, uh, a booking system then. You, you know, I would send you an, we'd go email back and forth. Okay, she was on disability. I think I got most of her disability check. And I kept telling her that I, I can't do this to you. I started cutting down the rates. I felt horrible because I, I was we were talking on the phone four or five hours a day. But she said, Susan, uh, you're better than my therapist. I couldn't get her out of that relationship, but I could get her to start to define her boundaries. That was really important to me. 
you know, we go into these patterns of how we relate to somebody and then that becomes our pattern. So you guys, I'm going to sign out not because I don't want to stop talking to you. I actually have a 12 o'clock and a 1230. I've got a contractor coming here, putting up a fan over there. And I got a 1230 interview on say Allo. So you guys, I adore all of you. I will be back next week. All of this you're going to see transferred onto the live, onto my page. And um, you can continue your comments there. I have about two minutes. I can continue writing you until it closes down for me. Thank you, everyone that contributed to Super Chat. Everyone, everyone who bothered to show up. Everyone who's trying to improve their dating life. Everyone who wants to be as honorable and evolved as they can in doing this. I thank you for being a part of my audience because my people are really the best. Love you all. Thank you so much. Have a brilliant week. And just know that I'm here for you. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.